I'm Dave Newey, uh, the human printer. Um, I'm from Barlaston, Stoke-on-Trent, and I am an artist and illustrator working in comics, primarily, and ceramics at the moment. And I kind of do printmaking. Um, a lot of my drawings, basically, are all made up of dots that take hundreds of hours to do. The main project I've been working on for the past few years, and prospectively the next few, um, is a project based on Spode which is, it's Dante's Divine Comedy set in Stoke, done in blue and white dots. So the first part that I exhibited not too long ago is nine tiles with a really intricate border pattern that sort of uh, documents the decline of the ceramics industry in the local area. Um, each picture, as I say, took hundreds of hours to do, so I sort of spent 18 months working on the project. Um, I had a studio on Spode for a large proportion of the time while I was working on that, which was fantastic. Um, and it also meant that I got to meet a lot of the former workers. Hello, yeah, my name is Lucy Slynn. Um, I'm a ceramicist. Um, I live in Litchfield in Staffordshire. Uh, I was a student at Staffordshire University and I graduated in 2014. Um, and I was very lucky last year to be offered this unit here at Middleport Pottery. Uh, my landlord is the Prince of Wales. Um, and I came here and I saw this fantastic building and I was aware that Middleport was being regenerated and obviously the whole area and how important it is and I was very keen when I came here to be part of that. Um, a lot of the girls that I work with, we, um, we were all at university together. So we knew each other, we knew each other's work. So I felt that I was coming here and I was actually being part of something. And we decided to set up a group called Makers at Middleport as a collective. Um, so we can do exhibitions together and we can actually try and build a base here of, of makers um, who are good quality makers. Stoke on Trent's heritage is vital to the work that I do, um, mainly because um, I, I looked at um, the industrial process of making ceramics and obviously that is what I'm doing at the moment but also because of the Potter's Museum because I spent so much time sketching in the Potter's Museum um, and I've got the work that I've got here, the sketches so some of the, the sketches that I've got here um, these plates for example um, this is a 19th century um, china plate at the Potter Museum and I just loved the surface pattern design on this. So I decided, you can see my sketches are very, very rough. I did a lot of 10 minute very quick sketches to get a very loose style to try and capture uh, my own sort of interpretation of sort of these designs because I wanted to bring these kind of designs into the 21st century because I looked at all of these beautiful pieces in the museum and thought well my grandma used to have them locked away in china cabinets and we weren't allowed to touch them but I want to make things that you can take out of the cupboard and that you can have and you can touch and you really like them. Okay I'm Caroline Farnell Smith and I'm uh, live in Staffordshire um, here in Great Haywood. I um, part-time I work at Kill University in student support and, um, and the other half of my week is spent uh, creating uh, pottery and, uh, and enjoying the, the ceramic industry. Um, gosh, if I, had to say, if I had to use just a few words that described um, ceramics, uh, relaxation, so, um, um, thera sort of therapy, therapeutic, very sort of, um, a lot of people um, uh, uh, touch my work and, and, and enjoy sort of almost stroking it. And, it, and, it's, and, and when I speak to them about it, they, they say, um, gosh, isn't it, isn't it relaxing? Isn't it therapeutic? Isn't it, isn't it so sort of tactile? And that's what I get when I make it. So, so, that, um, so whether that's a throne piece or whether that's something quite intricate that I'm building by hand, it is a very... Um, just very tactile and therapeutic in, in what you're doing and what you're creating. And obviously the excitement when you open the kiln and, and, and realise that all of those hours of work and that glazing and everything that comes out, you know, produces something that, you know, you, you, you think is amazing and hopefully other people do as well. It's, it's that sort of buzz that sort of, sort of starts off calm and then, and then sort of becomes exciting as, as, as you produce something that's, um, you know, that, that becomes the reward.
My name is David Copeland. Um, I'm from uh, North Staffordshire and Stoke-on-Trent. I was born in Hanley. I've lived in the Biddulph area for um, 40 odd years now since I was married. Uh, and I was uh, a pottery designer initially uh, for almost 20 years, based at Burgess and Lee. I went to the College of Art and I was lucky enough in 1962 uh, to be asked to design the prospectus cover. And um, I did, and, and, and that was it. Interestingly enough, having seen this, Roy Midwinter bought that design uh, with a view to publishing it on, uh, on pot. He, he never actually did, but he was very struck by the design and, uh, uh, and, and paid me handsomely, I thought, at the time. Uh, my name's Teresa Fox Wells. I was born in Longton. I now live the Newcastle end of the city and I'm the visitor centre manager at Middleport Pottery. I have to confess that before I started working here, I had all sorts of junk in the kitchen cupboards, bits from Argos, bits from Ikea. Um, and that's having been born and bred here. I just never really thought about it. Um, but the first time I ever went round the factory here and saw the way things were produced, I thought, oh, I totally get it now. I understand why these things are more expensive, but when you think the skill that goes into them, they have a value totally beyond their price. Um, and obviously being able to buy seconds is always a big help as well. So yeah, my cupboards are full of burly wear. Uh, my name's Bridie. Um, I'm originally from Cornwall, but I'm here in lovely Stoke-on-Trent and I'm a ceramic artist. I think the work that I make is very sort of, I think of it as untraditional. It's not mugs, it's not plates, it's not, it doesn't have a function, it's, it's art. But to me, ceramics was the only way for me to go with what I wanted to create. And, and then using the techniques as well that I use, um, often associated with manufacture and mass production, slip casting is something that you, you create once and you can create multiples of that. But to me, it was about what the multiples create rather than just churning out things for the mass market. Um, it was about replicating precision. And as you can see from, from my work, that is what excites me and that's what inspires me is that repetition. Um, and so slip casting for me is the, is the way that I represent those ideas. And ceramics is probably the best form, I think, for that to take. Um, it's quite diverse in what material I can use and the feel of that material and um, I make I make these little objects here um, which are sort of hand sized and because they're ceramic they're very tactile and you want to pick them up and experiment with them and see how that they work together um, and so for me that's why I work in ceramics and that's what ceramics is about to me is is having a relationship with with the material. Uh, my name's Philip Hardacre. I'm a ceramic and ceramic sculptural artist who lives and works in, in Stoke-on-Trent in Patmore. What I'm absolutely passionate about is, that, and the reason why I came to Stoke in the first place, is that Stoke-on-Trent is still like the birthplace of British ceramics, and it's still the centre of British ceramics in the UK. And although you know we've probably lost. 40,000 jobs in the last 40 years, there's still 20,000 people actively doing ceramics in the city in one way or another, either building kilns, making colour, producing clay, um, building kilns, firing kilns, and there's still a lot of people actually making ceramics in the city. So it's still the epicentre of ceramics in the UK. That's the most important thing. And what also fascinates me is the fact that underneath the ground, um, there is still loads of archaeological waste that's been made, you know, in the last 300 years. So I, I actively dig up that stuff and, and recycle it and use it in my work as a celebration of the people and the history of the potteries and its heritage. My name's Deborah McAndrew um, and I'm a playwright and an actress or actor. And uh, I'm from Yorkshire originally, um, but I've lived in North Staffordshire for uh, about 15 years now, um, and uh, very much part of the of the life of North Staffordshire and Stoke-on-Trent now. 
Firstly, ceramics uh, is obviously the objects that are made and that we use every day and they're beautiful and interesting and decorative and functional and, and so forth. But actually, um, they mean so much more than that, to me anyway. They, they, they are the people who made them, the, the stories of the people who made them. Um, when you see uh, ceramics made in a traditional way, um, you watch the numbers of pairs of hands that they pass, that it passes through in order to be finally there on someone's table. I find that very moving um, to think of the, of, uh, you know, of, whether it's the, the slip caster, the mould maker, the fettlers, the sponges, the glazers, the dippers, the, you know, it's just the whole thing really. It's, it's just amazing to think of all those people. Um, but also there's a kind of, I suppose, a, a sort of almost a philosophical thing around ceramics because all these human lives that go forward to make these, these objects, ultimately it's, a, it's the perfect combination of art, science and functionality. And to me, a little jug is like a perfect thing if it's beautifully made with great skill and enormous you know, amount of technology, scientific technology goes into making it, except beyond that there's design and, and artistry in the making of it. And finally, it's something you can use. My name is Ian Grant, I'm from Stoke-on-Trent and I'm the production controller for a company called Royal Collection Trust. The Royal Collection Trust is actually a charitable trust that was established several years ago now to administer and take care of the Royal Collection, which is one of the finest collections of art anywhere in the world. The collection is actually held in trust by Her Majesty the Queen, um, so it doesn't belong to the Queen, it actually belongs to the nation. Um, but it's a collection of art that goes back through the centuries that has been gathered by successive monarchs. And because we're a charitable trust, all the commemorative china that we develop and have produced here for us in Stoke-on-Trent, we sell in our shops to the many visitors and tourists that visit Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle and Holyrood House. And then all the profits from those sales go in to pay for the conservation and the preservation of the Royal Collection. What do ceramics mean to me? Um, I... I grew up with, surrounded by ceramics. Uh, my mother was in the pottery industry, my sister was in the pottery industry, my dad was a builder, uh, and I think I was the first male in my family not to be a builder, so that perhaps says a lot. Um, but growing up in, in North Staffordshire in the 60s, 70s and 80s, you know, the pottery industry was everything locally. Uh, and I never actually thought I would go into the pottery industry. I thought, oh no, I'll, I'll do something different. Um, but I left college at 18 and um, was lucky enough to be awarded an apprenticeship with what was then Josiah Wedgwood and Sons as a graphic artist. Um, that was a five-year apprenticeship. And I've stayed in the industry ever since then and it's my passion. I love it. I love it to bits. It's, um, it's given me a living um, and it's helped me to raise a family locally. And um, But... Having spent sort of 32 years in the industry, it's, it's kind of in my blood now. You know, I go home every night and there's white powder in my shoes. And, you know, it's, it's all those little things. And um, ceramics means the world to me. It's, um, it's, it's I say, it's in my DNA now. Uh, and I think working now for a company like Royal Collection Trust, where we, where we have access to some of the most fantastic ceramics that have ever been produced... Um, and then being able to, in some cases, bring those pieces back to North Staffordshire now and work with, you know, half a dozen or a dozen amazing local manufacturers to, to bring these things back to life is, uh, it's, uh, it, it feels like, you know, the, the best job I could have. You know, it's really, it's very rewarding and very fulfilling. Uh, hi, my name's Freddie and I'm from Stoke. Our history, Stokes history, pottery, fine arts, a skill. It's a very interesting gallery. Um, I really enjoyed ceramics. Um, I really enjoyed this area because it's 
interesting. It's interesting to see all the history and the heritage of Stoke-on-Trent. Um, I enjoyed this bit because it's about the Horde and I'm, I liked the Anglo-Saxons and it was really interesting reading about it. I enjoyed looking at some of the larger things because I read, I was reading somewhere and it shows that building these huge, immense and finely crafted things showing that I think Stokes had a very good craftsmanship for ceramics and pottery because it's our heritage. I mean, I don't use a lot of ceramics. I've got a few mugs for a morning cup of tea and coffee, but that's about it. Um, we've got some nice mint and stuff. That's quite nice. I, I like the artwork and some china plates, and they're quite nice looking at all the fine decoration and the handwork on them. It's, yeah, I enjoy them. Some of them, it's just a Tesco mug. I think, I mean, it's not related to this ceramic stuff, but I think we've got a lot of quite nice countryside quite close by and some nice moorland area on the outer Staffordshire area. But I do like the fact that we're very famous for our brilliant pottery. Come and visit Hanley Museum. My name's Belinda Latimer. I'm from uh, Stoke-on-Trent originally, live in Newcastle under Lyme now, and I'm an artist and maker and also um, a workshop facilitator um, in the area within the arts. Um, it's something from nature. It's something that, that, that's grown and developed um, by nature. And then we, of nature too, use it to, um, to create. Um, which is the most amazing thing. I'm still in awe of anyone who uses clay and successfully fires it and glazes it and makes it look beautiful and wonderful. Um, I have used clay in schools with kids, um, not generally processed through a kiln or created through using a kiln. It's generally been air dried, which, you know, constraints in school timetables mean that there's not enough time to do traditional routes. Um, and I, I find that people really enjoy it because they feel like they're actually physically getting back into the earth and playing like they used to when they were a child in the mud and making things and so for me ceramics is it's not about necessarily the end product it's about the process of making and the process of realizing what it can do and it is such an amazing um tactile material and it is quite forgiving because it will let you do a few things quite mean in a mean way to it um but then the end product is so beautiful, but so brittle as well. For me, it's the fragility of it. If I'm always a bit wary, which is why we generally have quite bog standard china in our house, which sounds awful, um, that we can replace quite quickly because with small people and big people who drop things a lot, it's quite tricky to sort of get anything that's, or pay it out for anything that's of any quality. But I do see a complete validity for having good quality stuff. It's just we don't have it in our house at the moment. <laughs> My name's Kyle McGough and I'm from Stoke-on-Trent. I know that it's clay, it's fired, it's, it's hardened by fire, it's like sculpted with, it's wet and it's like um, got water and it's like moulded into whatever shape and then it's fired out of this machine and it like bakes it and makes it harder and then you could put kinds of paint to decorate it and mould things into it with tools. The early stuff I didn't really like were the stuff that didn't look old and the stuff that looked more modern because I preferred the stuff that looked old and like made centuries ago and not just the pottery that was made like like a decade or so ago. I didn't really like the uh, pots and plates that much. I preferred uh, more creative stuff like this and the tiles, the Islamic tiles. Um, my name's Hannah Alt. I work for Valentine Clays and I'm the sales and marketing director there. Um, Valentine Clays, when I say I work for Valentine Clays, it's really my, my family's business so it's quite, it means quite a lot to me. See, ceramics to me, I'm probably not a typical Stoke and Trump person really. Um, ceramics is, I feel, in my blood. I, I, I mean, I suppose you can say most 
soap and trap people would say that ceramics is in their blood too but um, this business was set up the year that I was born. Um, I've been, you know, brought up in the, the world of ceramics in a sense, and I've been very fortunate to have worked for great ceramics businesses in my time as well. So it, it's it, it's a way of life for me. Ceramics is a is a choice. I choose to be here and to do this. I'm, you know, I went to London and I came back because of how much ceramics means to me and how much I want to be part of the resurgence that's going on in the industry now. It's an exciting time to be in ceramics because it, ceramics is coming back and it is fighting and you look at all the local industry and how well they're doing, the Churchill, the Steelites and the Bridgewater, really successful ceramic businesses that are doing well. So it's an exciting time, I think, to be part of this. And it's an exciting time for us as a business, which is why I came on board the family business Probably a year ago when I left um, Bridgewater to be involved in our expansion plans as well because it's a very exciting time when businesses are growing and doing well in ceramics. I think that ceramics is quite becoming quite a trend in a sense. I think people are realising more the importance of homemade, of made in the UK, British, you know, branding. People people are seeing more. Um, it, it's becoming more important to people in their home to have ceramics that's British, that's not from overseas. I mean, I've definitely seen a change in buying habits from my years of working at Bridgewater and places like that, how important ceramics is to people. Um, so I do think it's quite an on-trend thing at the moment, and we've seen that from the pottery throwdown, how that has kind of created a new interest in ceramics. Um, and created a new love for people really so it's interesting at the moment watching people um, have a go at ceramics have a go at throwing have a go at making there's a lot of new you know people that haven't thought about ceramics before are thinking do you know what this seems really exciting fun I get to do something with my hands be creative you know for something that really is a lump of earth in essence really creating something amazing with it it's quite quite rewarding for people so it's really nice to see that love of ceramics kind of growing at the moment. George Mackay, uh, Stoke on Trent. The city is famous for ceramics and that's what sort of gives it its label. Do you know much about how ceramics is made? Um, no, not at all really. Well, does ceramics mean anything else to you? Um, no. <laughs> I like the Minton section because I thought it was sort of colourful and different and creative and um, yeah, especially this masterpiece, the mint and peacock. I thought it was very interesting. Um, I liked to see the old and new methods of pottery and stoke on trend and I liked to see these certain techniques. I liked to see what's behind, you know, the history of the plate or whatever it is the pottery. One thing I learned was the East Indian company that made stuff for Minton um, in the 18th and 19th century, they um, made India a po more popular place due to the sort of wild things they put on the plates and the jungles and elephants and stuff. I liked the information displayed because it really, it said, who, what, where, why, when, stuff like that, how. And it didn't just show the plate, it showed how it was made and where it was made and the history of sort of that section. My name is David Poole and I'm a volunteer here and uh, I work in the visitor centre which involves chatting to people and giving them information as they walk around the visitor centre and also I uh, take tours around the factory as a guide. Uh, strange enough, um, I've never actually worked on the manufacturing side of ceramics but I've lived in Stoke-on-Trent all my life and I'm the eighth generation of a pottery family and uh, it's my heritage and uh, I'm very proud to be sharing that with everybody else 
I want to tell the story of uh, the Potteries and, and my ancestors. That's why I do it. I look back at the influence it already has. I mean, how many of us eat off wooden plates anymore? We all use the product of this industry. Maybe some of it isn't made here anymore, but at least that's where the, uh, the process started. A lot of the technology was involved. And uh, it still plays a large part in the industry of this area. And as such, has a knock-on effect into the rest of the region. Um, I think there are some uh, there is a reaction to foreign imports that is going on. That just may be my opinion, but that's a feel we're getting from people walking to the door here. Um, that basically um, a lot of the old major manufacturers are seriously considering bringing some of the patterns back from the Far East and so on. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that, because I think that will make a, a, a radical impact on, on this area should that happen. I think it's largely to do with, with fashion. I mean, pottery has always been a fashion business to a degree. And I think uh, with the likes of television programmes like Bake Off and, and cooking programmes, that sort of thing, I think people are actually um, gathering around themselves rather larger stocks of ceramics than, than they would have normally. I mean, when I got married, um, you could expect to have a dinner service or a tea set then that faded away. But we're getting more and more people in the factory shop looking to buy that sort of item, young people. So I think there is something moving there somewhere. Um, I think the lifestyle magazines have had an influence. Um, basically, as much as I, I see these sort of magazines, there, there seems to be articles about how to serve food better, linking taste with, with what it's served on. So I think those are, those are making an impact. There's also some overseas um, interest in buying English ceramics. We get in the factory here, we get quite a lot of overseas visitors, particularly from the Far East, buying um, our product and taking it back with them. And Burley's biggest export markets are Japan and Korea. So we, we're actually starting a trend going the other way. My name's Gemma Baskerfield and I am originally from Middleport, where we are now, and I work for Burley Pottery as their retail manager and company historian. I think heritage is very important to the ceramics industry. I think it's become more so certainly in the last sort of five years, um, where you see here at Middleport, we've got the Prince's Regeneration Trust in and have developed this site and taken note of the heritage. I think those businesses in Stoke-on-Trent that are ceramics based that are doing well, I think heritage is playing a very big part in that. Um, and understanding our heritage in Stoke-on-Trent, it's raising the awareness for local people to be um, proud of, the, of, of ceramics, proud of where they come from, why we're here in the first place, why we're all in this city. Um, I think the future of ceramics is really mu very much bound with, with heritage and it's important that we all remember that. Well, I think the ceramics industry has been through a very difficult time. Um, certainly when you compare the state of the ceramics industry when I was, so I'm 35 when I was a child, there were lots and lots of potteries. We didn't particularly take note of them. They were just everywhere. It was just what there was on every street corner, a pottery. Um, and then that underwent a difficult time which really started in the sort of post Second World War period with the growth in, in the size of potteries and the, um, when people started to bring in more um, machinery and started to automate pottery production and that eventually led to outsourcing. Um, the, the industry declined over that period of time to the point where in the 80s and then going into the 90s it really was a, uh, an industry that was, was on its knees. And I think what was left, the, 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 the companies that were, came out of the ashes, if you like, of, of that collapse, all did something different. They were all niche 
um, companies. So for us, we were the last. We are the last people transfer printing, Moorcroft or tube lining. Um, you know, even Steelite. They're making fantastic hotelware, which is stronger than anything that you could buy anywhere else. Everybody who's left does something different. And we've had to rely on understanding where we've come from and what makes us individually special um, to, to grow and to survive. And um, it's not all about making the cheapest piece of pottery in the world anymore. It's about making something special. And, and part of that is all packaged up in the history of Stoke-on-Trent and the history of how we make these pieces of pottery. My name is Alison Morgan and I'm the curator of the Dudson Museum in Hamley Stoke-on-Trent. Well, I'm originally from Lancashire, from Bolton in Lancashire, but I came to Stoke-on-Trent to study ceramics um, more years ago than I care to declare on camera, but uh, yeah, I've um, been here ever since, came as a student and, and still here. Well, there's such a huge part of my life and have been for the whole of my life. I've either been involved in it, either in the history of ceramics and the heritage of it. I've also been involved in teaching ceramics. I also make ceramics. So it's, you know, right across a very broad spectrum, it's been a huge part of my life. They mean so many things in, in different ways. I mean, for example, the museum collection, that, that means that they tell a wonderful story. They, you know, they, they mean social history to me. And the things I make mean very personal, they're very personal and, and have a very different meaning to me. And they also mean a lot in that I've been teaching ceramics either through to school children or to adults as well. So that's meant something else. That's been passing on skills, which is obviously very important, especially at the moment when ceramics is no longer a core curriculum subject for schools. And that's one of my big passions, I think, is to get youngsters more involved in ceramics. Having got that tremendous heritage, I mean, it's got everything behind it. I mean, there are still the skills in the city, the heritage is still in the city, so there's everything to promote ceramics in the future. And hopefully, um, the industry will still grow as it's beginning to do again in this area. I mean, people tend to think of it as one big declining industry, when of course it isn't. There are lots of small artisan potters starting off, which I think have got to be encouraged. Um, so hopefully the big manufacturers will play their part as well um, in, in preserving the future and creating jobs and opportunities and keeping the heritage here for tourism. My name's Joyce Ivashko. Um, I'm from Northern Ireland uh, originally, but I've lived in the potteries for over 30 years. Uh, I'm a painter um, and I use um, unusual materials including ceramic pigment, clay, cement and different types of paint. I've got uh, Burley, Wedgwood, I've got some Spode. Royal Dalton, I've got some Royal Dalton. Um, and I think what, you know, if, if, you're, if you're buying the, you know, the sort of the best quality, I think, you know, they will last. Because um, obviously, I, I'm probably like everyone else, I've bought, you know, um, I don't know, plates that have come just from the set that have come from a supermarket, for instance. And I think what I've, I have noticed is that they, they chip and they, so the quality of it. So even though you're paying more maybe for, you know, a higher end type, type of pottery, but it will last longer because it, it doesn't seem to, to chip. So I hope we don't chip any now I've said that. Um, but, um, but I think the quality um, and also the, the, um, the decadence of eating your dinner off a beautifully... Um, designed and um, printed plate um, is probably something that I think as you get older you become more um, appreciative of really um, so it's a bit of a treat really to, to eat your dinner off um, highly decorative traditional more type of plate. My name is Libby Ward and I'm from Stoke-on-Trent and I'm a contemporary jeweller. Yes, I mean, I've, grow I've grown up in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, all of my family have been in ceramics, whether it be kiln working, hand painting, slip casting, 
Um, I've always grown up with it and I've always known it's there, it is the industry. Um, so for me, ceramics is such an important part of my heritage and also me as a creative. We've got so many creative people in Stoke-on-Trent and I think it is, you know, we, we have got this rich heritage in ceramics that is, you know, it's, it's tucked away, you know, and at the moment it's really starting to thrive and places like Middleport, you know, I mean, you can't dream of a space like this for a workshop and with it being the old ceramic, you know, all the ceramic buildings and all the different parts, it's fantastic to be a part of that and it's inspiring as well. So it's, yeah, it's a massive, a massive part of, of the creative space. There's just a buzz. Um, that's the best way I can, I can describe it. Like there's small creative groups, especially locally as well, run by the council. Um, and they're getting this beautiful art and culture scene going again. And we're getting more and more small individual makers popping up throughout the area as well that we, we didn't really know about, but now the kind of sunshine like come out, they've all started crawling out and we've been able to talk to each other and having a space like this and getting people to actually encourage people to come in and see that there is makers, you know, thriving in, in places like this. You know, I think people come away with a buzz and they look for more, you know, little things that are going on in the area. Um, and like I said, especially at Middleport at the moment, with all the Prince's Trust Regeneration, for the area and here, it was all kind of like linked all to the ceramic heritage. So yeah, it's kind of just growing and growing. I use, I often have my dog with me at my studio. So we go for a little doggy walk and I walk all down by the canal and there's the most amazing found objects. Um, materials, um, little bit, you know, little pieces of ceramics, little pieces of metal, you know, they, old fettling sponges. Um, that for me is it's, it's gold, you know, and to to have these objects that have got a story behind them, they've got a separate life to them, you know, where did that come from? Why is it here? Um, and to have that kind of industrial feel of and the mix of materials as well that were used. Um, for me, you know, I absolutely love it. It's found objects, rust, um, broken pottery. It's, I, I love it, you know, I breathe it. And it's one of them, you know, I can either use that actual found object as a piece of work, or, you know, I can recreate it in a different material. I can recreate it in resin, silicons, latexes, maybe even a little bit of clay, you know, just to get that kind of like material and that all kind of just spreads. Oh. I, I, of a body of work. <laughs> I think we need to push small businesses a lot more, especially small individual ceramicists. Um, the BCB that they have in Spode is absolutely fantastic, you know, because they're picking small makers. It is more in the contemporary craft, contemporary ceramics um, genre rather than traditional ceramics. But I think this is where our ceramics is going. You know, we're always going to have that traditional, you know, the manufactured, you know, all in Stoke-on-Trent tableware. But there is another side to ceramics as well. So there is that contemporary ceramics and that drive that we've got these small artists um, thriving in Stoke. I prefer more contemporary ceramics, but I love vintage ceramics. Um, so I'm always, I love like 70s. Um, what was coming out of the area in the 70s, um, just the designs, the beautiful bodies, the straight lines. Um, but again, I am more prone to more art uh, ceramics. Um, so I'm kind of, I like both of them. I like traditional ceramics, but I also like contemporary ceramics. Um, and I do buy both. My name is Maureen Bakewell. I'm from Stoke-on-Trent in Longton, and my profession was an underglazed biscuit painters on John Beswick's. What does ceramics mean to you? Oh, a lifetime of work, really, um, of earning a profession. I don't know how much there is left now, but it saw me through my lifetime and a lot of other people. 
yeah. And hopefully there's still some there somewhere. Beswick's was a family firm, and you, you couldn't get on there unless your brother, your sister, your mother, somebody that spoke for you. And I waited 12 months for my sister who worked there to get me a, 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 an apprenticeship on there. You were paid in according you know, to what you were painting on, but even so, um, some were large, some were small. Uh, some you could get two dozen on your bench, some you could get ten. The big dogs, you could only get five or six. So, you know, you're up and down quite a bit, yes. My name's Alan Holt from Valentine Clays Limited. I'm a local Stoke lad, uh, been in the business now for 36 years and love, love being in the industry. Valentine Clays Limited uh, began with myself and my father 36 years ago. Um, and we started on a shoestring of a budget and buying equipment from scrap yards and things to, to, to begin the company and we were quite successful and we grew the company year on year on year on and until we're in quite a strong position that we are today. It was difficult for me to appreciate um, the art of ceramics to begin with as a young man. Um, Nowadays I'm far more interested in ceramics and, and all types of ceramics, whether it be industrial ceramics or studio craft ceramics, even educational ceramics and everything else. So you could really say that ceramics is, runs through my veins, uh, very, uh, very, very pro, pro ceramics. That brings me on to the point that uh, I mentioned earlier, that the um, I still feel as though we had uh, a, a bad uh, publicity 20, 30 years ago where pottery uh, factories were closing down left, right and centre, people were losing their jobs and it was very difficult for them to have any confidence um, in, the, in the ceramic companies that were left. Um, and, and that's the difficult part I think we've got now is to, for young people especially to um, want uh, and be keen to join the, the industry to, and see there's a good future there because I believe there is a good future in, in the ceramic industry uh, but we've got to get the message out and I think that's difficult to erase the memories of past bygone days hopefully uh, we can do that uh, as the industry I believe now is, is progressing and, and, and growing I certainly think it's a growing industry that we're in now Stoke-on-Trent people in general, I think, are very industrious people. Very friendly, very hard-working, uh, and the influence that they're, to the young people, their parents, so they must try and encourage younger people uh, and influence the younger people to come, up, come into the industry. There's those many different careers that can be found in the industry, not just one, there's, there's, it goes across the board. Uh, educational or, or designers and things like that, and then, and then there's obviously the labourers and the people who, who are on the shop floor and, and, and that will always be the same I think. Get the message out to come into the industry. There's a future in the industry for, for young people. Hello, my name's Samuel Ward. Uh, I work in music publishing and I am from Buxton in Derbyshire. Ceramics uh, means many things. I mean, it's a contemporary art form and also, you know, having grown up in and around Stoke-on-Trent, it's a great link to the heritage of the city. I did grow up around here. Um, it's a fantastic town, it has a lot of history and it's on great display here at Hanley Museum. It has a fantastic selection of uh, ceramics from many different eras, many different techniques, and it's a great representation of the city's culture. I'm a big fan of the owl. I love the owl. <laughs> he brings me a lot of joy. But also, I'm big, uh, the Minton uh, displays are always very, very impressive. And also, the selection of cows always cheers me up. It has a very deep and um, relevant cultural heritage. It's obviously very sad that a lot of it is gone, but I think 
um, with the work here at the museum and also with the biennial at uh, Spode Works. You know, it's, it's great to see that being kept alive and being part of the, the region's culture. <laughs>